some things in sport are instantly recognizable. While many different variety of race cars can look remarkably similar, there is absolutely no confusion when you see one of these. Dragsters, rails, thoroughbreds of the drag strip, and if it isn't nitro, alcohol stands alone as the title attraction in strips across North America. The sportsman cars, on the other hand, thrive on variety. Stock, super stock, super comp, and super street. If it can navigate a drag strip without exotic bells and whistles, you'll find it here. From Race City Motorsports Park, Calgary, Alberta, it's the Mopar Canadian National Open on Raceline. <laughs> everyone, I'm Eric Thomas along with Ron St. Clair and John Massingbird welcoming you back to Race City Speedway Motorsport Park. We're in the Mopar display here for the Mopar Canadian National Open. I want to tell you something, Ron, this pits over here, you can hear them warming up now. Some of the most impressive NHRA Division 6 machinery I've ever seen at this facility and the highlight of the show will be those alcohol dragsters. Well, they can be highlights wherever they go, as a matter of fact. We're going to see some really, really stout performances here today, I think. And the good thing about this format, it's an open invitational, so it's not just local drivers that are coming in from all over. And that means more horsepower, more competition. Sportsman cars, we've got a lot of them, and the stars of that show will be the stocks and the super stocks, and the launch with these machines alone is worth the price of admission. Well, many of the races will be won right at the starting line, and don't be a bit surprised if we see a couple of national records set here today in the car. I'll be keeping an eye on is that Lee Brothers Hemi-powered Cuda, the Red Deer, fastest car in its class on the planet. It is unreal. The guns are loaded, and we'll fire them when we come back on Raceline in a moment. Today's cars and trucks are more advanced than ever, but there is a price. Their harder-working engines can wreak havoc on the motor oil, breaking it down almost immediately. That's why Castrol GTX provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol, or your harder-working engine could make things hard on you. Castrol GTX, engineered for greater protection against breakdown. Look for Castrol GTX at these and other leading outlets. What other world is as young and alive as the world of green? Can your film see all these different greens the way Kodak film can? Only Kodak film has our exclusive system of color couplers, so no other film sees colors more accurately. If your film isn't getting these shades of green, change your film. Buying performance parts by mail order can be a surprising experience. But your local parts pro store has thousands of performance parts in stock on their shelves right now. And you'll also get great service from people who really know how to make it all work for you. And don't forget to pick up our free sales flyer for all the latest discounts. For a parts pro near you, call 1-800-567-4994. Out on the ice, I don't score points for how my hair looks. But after the game, in front of the press, when the cameras are just inches away and millions of fans are watching, my hair has to look great. And great hair can't have flakes. No way. So I get rid of them with head and shoulders. It keeps my dander from check and my hair looking great. Oh, hey, you can't hide under a helmet all the time. Head and shoulders every day. His great hair can't have flakes. This is Raceline, brought to you by Kodak Gold Ultra 400 Film, for all your Kodak moments, by Aerofoil Wiper Blades, the leading edge in wiper technology, by Mopar Performance Parts, your first choice, by Castrol GTX Motor Oil, engineered for today's harder working engines, and by your parts pro retailer. Call 1-800-567-4994 for the parts pro dealer nearest you. 
Eric Thomas, Ron Sinclair, John Massingbird set to get going here for the Mopar Performance Parts Canadian National Open. Good crowd on hand at the facility, Ron. Very beautiful day here in Calgary. Let's just hope the weather stays the way it is as you get a look around at the Mopar track backs here at Calgary's Race City Speedway. Scattered clouds, it is hot, 84 degrees, but as they will tell you, even in the wintertime, in the summertime, it's a dry heat. Yeah, and it could change <laughs> in a moment, too. You yeah. never know what's coming up over the mountains. So this is one of the nicest facilities, drag racing-wise, and over track racing wise that uh, we play at 3500 foot elevation here at calgary and i uh, wonder how that is going to play a factor in today's festivities great hospitality thanks to our many sponsors like any major motorsport event in north america they simply wouldn't survive without the sponsors joining us today is rick williams from chrysler canada rick first off uh Great support on Mopar's part of the uh, Mopar uh, Canadian National Open. Well, thank you very much, John. It's certainly a pleasure for us from Mopar Parts and Chrysler Canada to be able to support all of our dealers across the country that work on a day-to-day -day basis with these racers. And it's a real pleasure for us to be here at Race City. Now, you don't do this for the good of your health. You're out here to sell parts, promote the image of the corporation. You brought along the great Mopar display with the Viper, the Dodge Ram, and the Eagle Talon, and the Neon. Uh, you've run a lot of people through here over the course of the week. Oh, absolutely. There's an awful lot of attention here today at the Motorsports Exhibit presented by Mopar. And, of course, uh, there's a lot of attention at Chrysler today. And we're certainly pleased to uh, be in a small way back in racing here in Canada. Well, I know there's a lot of Chrysler cars competing here, Rick, and I know a lot of the fans have been thrilled just to see the Viper alone. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for supporting the uh, Canadian uh, uh, National Open by, by Mopar. Okay, thank you very much, John. Great to be here. Yeah, folks in Mopar really showing us a good time here. Let's ladder this up for you. Top alcohol dragster run. Round one, the semifinals, Sabunka and Sitko, and David Chuck against Brockman. Both cars capable of six-second passes. I suspect they'll be in the 200-mile-an-hour range, and it should be a good one right off the bat. These guys have uh, dialed in pretty good with some practice sessions all day. Thumbs up from Steve Sitko out of Edmonton, Alberta. 92 Arctic chassis, go by Ken Sitko. Keith Black is the power, and Dave Sabunka out of Edmonton, Alberta, covered up there. 90 Brad Claridge chassis, Keith Black power as well. His brother, Harold, the crew chief, on the automobile. Sitko's going to light him up for the first time here on Raceline this afternoon with the burnout to get those tires nice and tacky. Doesn't really appear that either lane has any advantage. Watching no. the practice sessions, they both appeared fairly equal. And here you get a look. It'll be Sabanka in the left lane. Sitko to our right. And the reaction time, uh, a reaction light rather, a four-tenths light here in Calgary. As opposed to the five-tenths light. Both are pro trees as Dave Sabanka gets his burnout all complete. Everybody's got different styles of doing the burnout. Some of the top fuel guys that we know, like Kenny Bernstein, take very conservative short burnouts. Other guys like John Forrest and Funny Cars like to blaze it halfway down the drag strip. Everybody has their own idea about how to do the burnout. Of course, the longer ones also wear out the parts, too. Also interesting to watch how they back up, too. Uh, some will come right back down the line that they just uh, took off mm -hmm. on, and others will be a little off-kilter for whatever reason. Backing in slowly, and as you mentioned, Ron, everybody's got their own style of doing things, just trying to get that advantage over the guy in the other lane, and they'll try just about anything. Dave Sabanka in the left-hand lane, Steve Sitko in the right-hand lane, both capable of coming off the line with some very good reaction times. And again, we're looking for 200-mile-an-hour passes here. Both of these gentlemen from Edmonton, Alberta, as you mentioned, Ron, this is a national open, so they're coming from all over points of Western Canada and the U.S. as well. And they get a fair amount of experience up there in Edmonton as well with the new drag strip. Pre-staging is done. Let's see who gets in here first. Sit goes in first. Sabanka off the line first, though, with a 448 reaction in the left-hand lane. Good drag race, and Steve Sitko will take the win. 663 with a 4, 201.07 miles an hour. Reaction time was the slower of the two, but he comes up with the win at the top end. Losing time, by the way, for Sabanka, 675 at 204. You saw our camera give a little applause there. There's the telemetry on the Mopar scoreboard. So Steve Sitko comes up with the first win of the afternoon. The crowd liked that. These dragsters are very popular, Ron. Have a look at the replay here. The Sitko car near lane, leaving just a wee bit late. 448 again, reaction on the far side, 464 here. Here's John Massingberg. Well, congratulations, Steve, a 663. Thank you very much. Uh, felt good. 63 in the heat of the day is not a bad shot. Uh, can you tune it up for the next round? Uh, I think we've got a little bit left in it yet. That's, uh, for me, that's a career best, so I'm pretty happy with it. 
Oh, double congratulations then. 63 ain't bad at all. Nope. Let me ask you, Steve, what's the track like? Anything coming up out of the track? Is there lots of traction uh, out there? It felt pretty good. It wasn't too bad. We uh, lowered our RPM today from yesterday because of the heat, but uh, it's, it's sticking pretty good. Good luck. Go get them. Thanks a lot. Think of the prairies, Saskatchewan, the breadbasket of Canada, and mile after mile of flat, waving, whispering wheat fields. After all, Humboldt, Saskatchewan isn't known for anything really loud or anything fast. Unless you happen to be looking for Team Boss Blue, Humboldt is home launching pad for the largest race team in Western Canada. Well, one look will tell you this is a first-class racing operation. From their hauler rolling down the road to their squadron of race cars, Team Boss Blue is very hard to ignore, whether they're rolling down the road, on the track, or just plain standing still. Drag racing is only part of this high-performance conglomerate. In addition to their top alcohol funny car and alcohol dragster, Team Boss Blue also fields a late-model stock car, a sprint car, and a pulling tractor. If there's a race anywhere, chances are they're there. Collectively, there's over 62 years of racing experience with this team. The drag racing operation is handled by a crew of four for both cars. And at the helm of that crew is Larry Corsheen, and he himself is a retired funny car pilot. Larry, why would you go into drag racing on such a large scale? Well, based on where we're located in Saskatchewan, uh, it just seems that much easier and to bring in a bigger operation, uh, it makes it just a little bit more fiscally possible for us to keep the operation going on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, when the cash flow comes in, we can always multiply it by two. Larry, how did this team evolve? Give us a brief thumbnail sketch of how this two-car operation got going. Well, basically, we all got together in the last year or two and started putting the cars together. Uh, we all started it all together in a small town just a little south of us named Lanigan. And we uh, all had our own cars. Everybody kind of got together. Everybody kind of wanted to play with the big boys, I guess you could say. And we just got the opportunity. Once we put it together, we fiscally, we could finally do it, you know, and it, which is very tough. And logistically, where we are, it's tough to get the parts, it's tough to get the people that we need to in order to do things properly. Larry's drivers are a pair of very aggressive individuals who share a nothing but flat out approach. At the wheel of a Team Boss Blue alcohol funny car, 33 year old Kevin Brockman, a Humboldt, Saskatchewan native. Back in the early 80s I used to run just a door slammer and then uh, I got out of it for about 10 years. I never went near a racetrack because I thought if I ever went near a racetrack I'd be into it up to my eyeballs again and and then uh, a year ago, uh, Kevin and Randy Terrace, they bought a funny car and they came to me one day and asked me if I wanted to get involved again. And Well, here we are, uh, a year later, where you got two cars and a trailer and we're back into it, up to our eyeballs again. The top alcohol dragster section of Team Boss Blue is handled by 36-year-old Mike Greckel. He hails from Edmonton, Alberta. Well, the team just came together in the spring and uh, it seems to be a very uh, green bunch of guys. Um, I was brought in for my experience, not that I have a lot, but uh, it's really coming together nicely. Uh, the team, like I say, the team's green, but I think give us a year or two and we're going to be uh, a team to contend with, both drivers, and uh, definitely look for us around the circuit because that's the plan in the long run. Both of these race cars are consistently quick. They'll turn 620s and 630s in the neighborhood of 220 miles an hour. But if I know drag racers like these gentlemen, there's always that gnawing need to go faster. How about the 300 mile per hour neighborhood with a nitro funny car or dragster? Well, there's been some talk about it. And uh, we're getting a lot of help from a fellow by the name of Ken Boschman from Saskatoon who is helping us with Team Boss Blue. And, uh, you know, it's with the love for the sport that we do have, uh, we would... You know, like it's something that's there, but uh, till the cash is there, we'll, we'll work on it till then. Here's a travel tip. The next time you cross the prairies, listen for a low rumble near Humboldt, Saskatchewan, then get out of the way. It'll get louder, and it'll get faster, and it'll command your attention.
The drivers and crew of Team Boss Blue, some of racing's colorful people, brought to you by Kodak. And wouldn't you know, we'll get right into it here with a member of Team Boss Blue, but we're looking at Brian Davidchuk out of Edmonton, Alberta. We get into the second run here, and this is Team Boss Blue. Brockman, his inaugural run with his car, and they're having problems getting it fired. David Chuck, though, could be the uh, dark horse here uh, in this particular competition. I wouldn't be this surprised that he cuts a very, very low time. He's been extremely quick all day in practice. Well, the Team Boss Blue guy's got to get a wiggle on here because David Chuck's already done his burnout, and they will not wait forever. So the crew out of Humboldt, Saskatchewan, have really got to get going here and get this machine fired up. This is not the way they wanted to debut this car. You can be sure of that. Oh, after a long trip in from Humboldt, it's got to be uh, somewhere in the vicinity of uh, seven to eight hours. Our trip exactly well all the candles are lit on prairie fire and kevin brocklin will get in through the water box and do his burnouts making sure everything is uh, fastened down correctly has to be kind of unnerving though eric when you uh, get this close to the start line and you oh, have yeah. problems and you don't have a whole lot of time out there as you know in quarter mile drag racing now brocklin's kind of a versatile guy a lot of his experience is in door slammers and wow a pretty aggressive burnout there almost over the line he will also drive the team's funny car but for this afternoon he'll make the inaugural run in this s and w chassis machine in the dragster again we don't give any advantage left or right lane here they appear to be in pretty good shape and he had some great traction there in that burnout to uh, pull it right to the right tremendous amount of torque here as well be careful as you uh, get backed in here Everything sounding good. It's got that uh, patented alcohol dragster hunt, the throb of the motor. 2,000 horsepower in these machines, basically. Not so sure we're going to see a national record set here in top alcohol dragster today, but for the record, it is 5.79 with a 5. Our fastest time so far is a 6.63. Brian Davidchuk, Ken Sitko, the brother of Steve, who we saw in the previous run, is the crew chief on this car. So the Sitko family is knee-deep in alcohol drag racing. David Chuck, left lane. Brockman in the right lane. Waiting for both drivers now to stage. Moving up. Nice and easy. Beautiful day here in Calgary. This track is tacky all the way down, Ron. And the winner will meet Steve Sitko, who 663 stands as the quick time right now as they stage. Pre-staging is done. And they're waiting a long time here. Don't burn it down, guys. Brockman gets in first. David Chuck off the line with a 588. Whoa, Brockman sleeping with an 816. That makes it rather easy for Brian David Chuck out of Edmonton. He will take the win, 641 with a 6210.18 miles an hour. Best GT and mile an hour so far, Ron. Fastest of the day, losing time is a 702 as we get a look again. Saw some smoke there on the right side of the motor. You may have heard a couple of parts. And look at the leave advantage by David Chuck. John's at the top end with our winner. Congratulations, Brian. You guys actually stepped it up in the heat of the day. Uh, a 641 on your 42 qualifying. Yeah, we're quite happy. Last night, it, it kind of hurt a couple pistons on that final pass, so we, we knew it would run about the same, but we're, we're real happy that it picked up in this heat of the day. Uh, everything's clean and dry? It looks. We've got a small oil leak, but we'll find it. We'll, we'll be all set for next round. See you next round. Thanks a lot. He hopes it's a small oil leak, put it that way. Good run here in Top Alcohol Dragster. Look forward to the final. There's lots more to come on Raceline from Calgary in a moment.
the quicker pick you upper. So colorful. And 50% longer than Jumbo Bounty. Look for special seasonal prints. So every season, they not only pick up your spills, they pick up your spirits. The quicker pick you up. McCain captures perfect pizza taste in a pocket, ready for that first bite. Now's the time for your favorite snack. Perfect pizza taste in a crust that's baked, not fried. So there's no leaks, no mess, just taste. McCain! Pizza Pockets. Just perfect pizza taste. Welcome back to Race City, Calgary, Alberta. The Empire Canadian National Open, Eric Thomas, Ron St. Clair, and... John Massingbird, stock and super stock. We're into handicap starts and dial-ins. Morris and Graves, Bidniak and Scott, Seminuk against Williams. And we've moved the reaction light to a 5-0-0 reaction now. And, of course, these drivers will have dial-ins on their windshield. Brian Morris at a Sherwood Park, Alberta. The 89 Plymouth Cuda, 340 cubic inch Plymouth Power. In the left spectator lane against Joe Graves out of Edmonton, 90 Olds Calais, small block Chevrolet Power. Morris dialed in at 1228, off the line first, a 1068 dial in for Graves in the near lane. Morris is a machine tool salesman, Graves by trade, a former super gas racer. The win will go to Joe Graves. Yes, a 10.68 at 119.63 miles an hour. Losing time was a 12.25. He ran under his dial in and broke out. And Graves just about bang on. Dial to 10.68 is ET 10.68 with an O. Pretty accurate. Here's a look at the top end. This was a very, very close race, but as mentioned, Morris broke out and ran three hundredths of a second under his dial in. John's got Graves at the top end. Congratulations, Joe Graves. Good run. Thank you. Going to put you into the uh, the next round. What do you expect? I expect the car should run probably about another 68 there. The air is still uh, pretty hot out here. Good stuff. Uh, good luck and go get them next round. Yeah, thanks a lot. Joe Gaves, a winner of this round in Superstock. All righty, and he will advance a little further over on the ladder. Now, for all you muscle car fans, yeah, your eyes do not deceive you. That's a 70 Plymouth Roadrunner, 446 pack. Clarence Bidniak against a good old 68 Camaro with Ron Scott out of Millet, Alberta at the buttons. Well, Bitniak will be dialed in at 11.79 and the 12.47 dial in for Ron Scott in the uh, Camaro. Current Western stock and super stock points leader, Clarence Bitniak, in the Roadrunner. I like about these meets, Eric, you get a chance to see some of the classics. Absolutely, and they're in gorgeous shape. and They'll just keep right on going for years and years and years. Both drivers playing head games here, getting set. Now they're staged and ready to go. Scott got in first with the advantage, and he bulbs. He red lights. What a shame that'll hand it over instantly to Clarence Bidniak. Bidniak with a reaction of 573 will be good for the win. We'll check out his winning time at the top end. Although he goes through second, he picks up the win with an 11.73 at 112.66 miles an hour. So he actually broke out, but uh, the ultimate sin, Ron Scott bulbing, red lighting at the other end, and Bidniak will take the win. And that's too bad for Scott, too, Eric, because he had a great run, really, a 12.48 on yeah. a 12.47 dial in, but that 4.32 reaction red light was the difference, and we're going to get a look at it here. Yeah, it's one of these classic easier-said-than-done deals. You cannot move the car forward and break that light beam before the green light comes on. If you do, you red light. Well, time for the next round of action here in Superstock. More of these hot muscle cars, 74 Plymouth Cuda. This is Bill Williams out of Clive, Alberta. 360 cubic inches worth of Dodge Power. And in the other lane for the Chevelle fans and lots of them around, but not too many 68 Chevelles. Lee Brothers Performance, the record centers that you talked about. Here's that hot Chevelle, 327 Chevy Mouse Power. And at the pedals, Mike Seminuk out of Edmonton, Alberta. Seminuk, as you can see, dialed in at 1299. And 11.24, the dial in in the right-hand lane for Bill Williams. Boy, this is like hamburger stand stuff back in the 1960s and 70s, isn't it? Seminuk in the left lane. Right over the tower lane, it's Bill Williams in the Cuda. And the Cuda's in first. Wow, 504 for Williams in the near lane. And a 685 for Seminuk. Give the advantage in the early going to Williams. Right up against the stutter box. And the Cuda's across the line first. 
And the win will go to Bill Williams. 11.27 on an 11.24 dial in. There's the mile per hour. Look at that reaction time, 5.04. Losing time, a 12.93 for Seminuck. And Eric, he ran under his dial in by six hundredths of a second. Still lost the race. Yeah, that's the beauty of this particular division. There's so many mathematical calculations that go in there that make it very interesting. Let's have a look at this again at the finish. Pretty good horsepower range right through the middle portion of the quarter mile. And that is a near perfect run, an 1127 on an 1124 dial in. Fans are loving this. Lots of enthusiasm here today at Race City in Calgary. They do love their drag racing in this part of the country. Okay, a little uh, drag racing trivia for you. PRN trivia brought to you by Performance Racing News, North America's motorsport authority. We talked about the burnout, so let's ask you, what's the purpose of this thing, dude? Clean, heat, and scuff the tires to run the engine up to check the RPMs, the valve readings, or to thrill and or confuse the fans? <laughs> is it a trick question? I got I th you thinking. I think it is a trick question. Well, we'll get the answer from you uh, a little bit later, but it's a very, very integral part of successful drag racing. I want to take C anyway, because I was thrilled. Yes, and you may have been confused, too. <laughs> All right, let's go to Super Comp and uh, ladder it up for you here. Long and Cameron, Crucial and Code. Campbell will go by himself. We've got some quick, quick automobiles in this particular division, Ron. Yes, we do. Running off a 920 index, and they'll go back to the 400 reaction line. Four tenths of a second off the Christmas tree. You are looking at Terry Cameron from Calmar, Alberta. Art Morrison, Kid Dragster, big block Chevy powered. Assembled by Ken Sitko. There's that name again. Terry himself, a former oval track stock car racer as he backs in. And through the roll cage, his opposition will be Lester Long in the 63 Corvette. Big block Chevy power. He owns Western Corvette Restorations Calgary, so he's got lots of parts. That's a gorgeous race car. It sure is. I'd like to get a real good close-up look at this, and I'm sure we will, particularly if he makes it to the top end first. Again, working on a 920 index and a 400 reaction. Long left side and Cameron to the right. This is going to be good, and that's what I love about Super Comp, Ron. A great variety of cars, rails against sedans and coupes and all kinds of things. They'll come off the line at the same time, and the reaction time will make all the difference for these drivers. On a 400 pro tree, the lights are on, and here we go. 431 reaction, near side for Cameron. 440, the reaction for Long. Down the top man, Terry Cameron will take it. 921 is ET, 143.56 miles an hour. Very, very good run indeed for Terry Cameron. Losing time at 934 at 149 miles an hour. Lots of mile per hour for Long, but Cameron gets the win. Don't know how much experience he had at the uh, oval track on the other side of the grandstand, but uh, doing a nice job in his drag racing portion of his career. Here's the start. You saw nine thousandths of a second difference right there. The near lane getting the uh, head start off the line. Getting going here in Super Comp at Calgary. Good run, Terry. Uh, 921. Thank you. Now, Wes is our less uh, long. He's been pretty hot in the Corvette all day long. Uh, many a time. <laughs> Beat you many a time. Well, yeah. you got a little revenge today. We did too, yeah. I'd like to thank my sponsor, uh, Schwab Pontiac Buick, uh, LeDuc, and Campbell Automotive for building a, uh, building a good car, and uh, especially my crew chief, Crystal, for setting the car up. Well, you did a good job for them today. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. They get all the sponsors in there. That's very important at this level as well. All right, Casey Crucio, that's him there, Drayton Valley, Alberta, 89 Chevy Cavalier, big block Chevy power. Relative newcomer to drag racing. He'll face Tom Code out of Calgary in his 77 Chevy Vega. Big block Chevy power pushing this one along too. Both cars have been practicing well in the uh, 920s and 930s all day. Up around 140 miles an hour, 140 plus. So this should be a very, very good race. And again, I think this one's going to be won right here at the start line. Very impressed with these times and these ETs too. Don't forget, we're pretty high up here sea level wise. These guys still turn some pretty darn good numbers. 3,500 feet and very hot here in Calgary. Off the line first, a 460 in the left lane, a 467 here in the near side, very close. Excellent drag race all the way down, and Casey Crucio out of Drayton Valley, Alberta, will take the win in the Cavalier. He won by about a blink at the top end. <laughs> That's about all it was, yeah. 926 with a 4 at 147.56 miles an hour. Losing time for Tom Code, 927 with a 1. Here's how close it really was. Yeah, they just went side by side all the way down, Ron. Once we get to uh, the business end of things, Crucial, wow. in the spectator lane, takes the win. Here's John. Congratulations, Casey. 921, a uh, good run. Oh, that was an excellent run. You know, after struggling whole weekend, not even making quick 16, which is kind of disappointing. The car's been missing whole friggin' weekend, and I finally got it together. 
and it's a too bad I got to beat my buddy out, but hey, better run wins. There you go. Long afternoon. You're making your way through it. Colorful guy, colorful verbiage, colorful car. Got to have it in drag racing. That's all part of the charm. Now, this is kind of a unique deal, and you say, well, what about a buy run for Mark Campbell out of Spruce Grove, Alberta? Very important to make these things because they use them sometimes to test some of the adjustments they've made. Well, it gives the driver a little more experience, too, you know, coming off the line, getting the feel of the light and so on. You may want to talk about experience. This young man is only 17 years old. He got his NHRA Supercomp license on his 16th birthday. His brother Steve is also licensed to drive this car. Father Don, the veteran, is the crew chief. Put together a great run, Eric. Off the line with a 401 reaction. Not bad. Not bad at all. And a 922 with a 6, as you see. 149.82 miles an hour. That may make him one of the favorites in the next round. That's the highest mile per hour on the winning side so far. Race line coming back after this. A whole paper towel can be too much or too little. Now there's new Selectasize, the bounty you customize. Special smaller sheets. The quicker picker-upper lets you pick out one sheet for small jobs, two sheets for regular jobs, three sheets for large jobs, and it's 50% longer than Jumbo Bounty. New Selectasize, the bounty you customize. The quicker picker-upper. New Bounty Selectasize. <laughs> delicious frozen concentrated iced tea from McCain. Refreshing, thirst-quenching beverage made with the essence of unique tea blends. McCain iced tea. Caffeine-free, no powdery taste. Just the clean, fresh-tasting flavor of McCain iced tea. Caffeine-free, no powdery taste. McCain, great-tasting refreshment down to a tea. In five minutes, Eva. Okay, you ready? You look great. Couldn't do it, actually. Especially after... That's what I'm here for, huh? A few weeks ago, I was getting Eva ready for her close-up, and I noticed something. Dandruff. So I told her about Head & Shoulders. The regular shampoos just rinse flakes away so they can come back. Head & Shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. You see the difference? What? Mark? You look beautiful. Head & Shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. Mopar, Canadian National Open, Race City Speedway, Calgary, Alberta, Eric Thomas, Rod St. Clair, and John Massingbird. Let's now get a little further over on the ladder and uh, bring you the stock, super stock semifinal. Bill Williams against Joe Graves and Clarence Bidniak all by himself with a bye run. Well, I think Williams will be tough. He ran an 11.27 on an 11.24 dial in in the opening run. He's changed his dial in this time around, Eric, to 11.22, as you see. And Graves uh, ran dead smack on a 10.68. Dead smack on his dial in, so he's altered that. Graves in the near lane dialed in for this run at 10.64. Yeah, they'll put the dial in right on the uh, window with some white shoe polish. And just let everybody know what his numbers will look like. Bill Williams took care of Mike Semenuk in the right lane to get here. Joe Graves out of Edmonton in the Olds Calais. He beat Brian Morris to reach the semifinal. And they're back to a 5-0-0 reaction, just waiting for Graves to stage, and he's in. He'll go second. Off the line is Williams, a 591 red light near lane for Joe Graves. Oh, yeah, we've had a couple of those. Everybody a little anxious. Joe Graves will just shut it right down, and Bill Williams will cruise to the victory in the Cuda. Wow, when was he lucky? He broke out for the win with an 11.13 at 118 miles an hour on an 11.22 dial-in. So he got a break mathematically, but he certainly had a handle on it performance-wise. He'll roll down the window, get some, some wind in there and some cooling. It is, after all, 84 degrees out here. Let's watch the start here, Ron. 591 reaction off the line here for Williams. And watch for the red light. Leaving just a tad early. 488, by the way, for the red light. And down at the opposite end, the whole thing is basically meaningless as Joe Graves bulbed or red lighted at the top end. Graves went through anyway with a pretty good time, a 1066 and a 1064 dial in. But Williams gets the win. All righty, back to that roadrunner. Clarence Bitniak out of Edmonton, Alberta. 
he eliminated Ron Scott to advance to the semifinal. 446 pack. Well, a lot of cheeseburgers have been <laughs> munched down onto the rumble of these things over the years, I'll tell you. That's a classic looking machine. He was dialed in at 1179. He's changed his dial in for the solo run to an 1172. And off the line with a 572 reaction. He's just going to shut it down and do it nice and gentle. You've got to take the run. You've got to take the light and the start. And it's an official run, but it's a by run. Why hurt the parts? Why hurt the equipment? Just gently get down here and uh, take it for a cruise, as it were. And you'll stop the clock anyway with a 1655 at 54 miles an hour. Nice. Oh, dazzling. <laughs> more, more my style. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so Bidniak with a by run just to uh, make sure everything is uh, holding together. No leaks and no uh, strange readings on the dials. We'll head back to the pit. Now, let's give you the answer to performance racing news trivia. Purpose of the burnout, to clean and heat and scuff the tires, to run the engine up, or to confuse and thrill the fans. Well, it's to heat and clean the tires to improve traction at launch. The water in the water box helps the rear wheels break traction to set up a tire spin to execute the burnout. Don't be confused. Hi, welcome to the Parts Pro Performance Center Tech File. You know, nowhere will you find more innovative engineers and racers than you'll find in drag racing. And they have to be by nature. This kind of stuff you don't go to the corner store and buy. In the alcohol funny cars and the alcohol dragster class, the Chrysler Hemi has been the engine that everybody's used for a lot of years. But Dave Zabunka and crew choose to do something a little bit different, and they're doing it with a whole lot of success. They use an Oldsmobile engine, and there's a couple of interesting things that these guys have done to make it even more unique and more efficient. They've gone to a two-plug uh, per cylinder setup with their spark plugs. They've got the normal setup down here with the plug that goes in the bottom, and that's the way it would be sort of standard in your normal automobile. But then they've also worked in a second set of spark plugs right through the top of the cylinder. So they actually bridge across in between the valves. This guy gives the guys a lot more spark and a lot more horsepower. They estimate, and the dyno shows it, up to 150 extra horsepower just with the spark plugs alone. Now, another interesting note on this thing, we talk about the superchargers a lot in drag racing, and basically it's nothing more than a big air pump. Air in the top, fuel mixes in, pushes it down through the motor. Well, an interesting fact with this is that it takes almost 800 horsepower just to drive this supercharger along. So think about that when you're thinking about your streetcar next time with some 200, maybe 250 horsepower. These things are unique. These guys are innovative. Nobody does it better. I think John's telling me I don't have enough horsepower in my streetcar to turn the blower, let alone the engine. Hard to believe they'd find an extra 150 yeah. for a spark plug. It really is, but they're always looking for that advantage in the, the technology department. Super Comp semifinal coming at you now. Mark Campbell and uh, Casey Crucial and Cameron by himself in a bye run. Well, look for Campbell to be very tough here again. He'll be lining up in the left lane as we get a look at uh, the machine set to go. Campbell, you recall, had a great reaction time of 4.01. And he'll be in the left lane, Crucial in the right lane. His reaction time, last time around at least, was a very respectable 4.60. All righty, let's see what happens. The very talented 17 year old Mark Campbell to Spruce Grove, Alberta, Creighton Valley's Casey Crucial. Together, side by side at midway point. And it'll be Campbell for the win. And again, he won that one at the line. Eric, a 4 0 7 reaction that time. Winning time is a 9 21 with a 4 at 144.23 miles per hour. Losing time, 4 21 with a 6, <laughs> two thousandths of a difference. Not too much between these guys. And Mark Campbell may be young, but he's showing a great deal of talent. And he just nips it at the line by about half a car length. Well, as Mark uh, Campbell gets unbuckled here, it was a tough, tough run. Identical 921s for both you and Casey, but you got him. Great. Yeah, I let off just when going through the top end. I didn't see him, and he just just caught me. Must must have just in the lights, boy, and I just, just caught him by a little bit. One more round to go. Yeah, hope I can do it. Good luck. Great. Thanks. So Campbell wins it again with a great reaction time, but how about Crucial's mile per hour, 151 airing. That's the fastest in a losing car. Yeah, it certainly is. An excellent mile an hour. He'll be back another day to give it another try. So we've got ourselves a Mark Campbell, Terry Cameron final in Super Comp, but uh, we still have a bye run to go here, and Terry Cameron will take advantage of it. He's from Kalmar, Alberta. Working on the 400 light, and last time around he was off the line with a 431, had a great time of 921 with a 3 at 143.56 miles an hour. And let's see how Mr. Cameron does with a solo run this time. Terry navigating a Morrison Arctic Sitco dragster, big block Chevrolet. We'll push this down here. Yeah, you see that big rack? Nothing like it, huh? Off the, off the
the line, the red light, mind you, with a 380. Top end, 920 with a 7, almost dead smack on the index and 147.71 miles an hour. If he can straighten out the reaction time, he'll be top in the final. Love it when they do that. There's the uh, telemetry on the board, and they really know what their machinery can do, and they come in just about bang on their dial. So Cameron and Campbell will meet in the final. Well, bye run for Terry Cameron. Uh, Terry, you're going to have to run Mark Campbell. Uh, he ran a, just ran a 21. Actually, they both ran 20 runs, uh, so he's right on it. Uh, any uh, predictions for the next round? Well, we're going to go out there and give her our best, and uh, Mark's got a good competition. Uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. <laughs> All righty, we'll see you next round. Thank you. We've got the Super Cup Final and a whole lot more action coming up from Calgary on Raceline in a moment. Here's the most colorful bounty ever. New Bounty Fun Prints. They're the quicker pick you upper. So colorful. And 50% longer than Jumbo Bounty. Look for special seasonal prints. So every season, they not only pick up your spills, they pick up your spirits. The quicker pick you upper. New Bounty Fun Prints. Today's cars and trucks are more advanced than ever, but there is a price. Their harder working engines can wreak havoc on the motor oil, breaking it down almost immediately. That's why Castrol GTX provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol, or your harder working engine could make things hard on you. Castrol GTX, engineered for greater protection against breakdown. Look for Castrol GTX at these and other leading outlets. What other world is as young and alive as the world of green? Can your film see all these different greens the way Kodak film can? Only Kodak film has our exclusive system of color couplers, so no other film sees colors more accurately. If your film isn't getting these shades of green, change your film. Buying performance parts by mail order can be a surprising experience. But your local parts pro store has thousands of performance parts in stock on their shelves right now. And you'll also get great service from people who really know how to make it all work for you. And don't forget to pick up our free sales flyer for all the latest discounts. For a parts pro near you, call 1-800-567-4994. Some people call it Big Sky Country. It's Calgary, and it's a big sky, and it's a beautiful sky. Mopar, Canadian National Open, Eric Thomas, Ron St. Clair, and John Massingbird. Thrilled to have you with us. Lots of cars in the pits, and one of the divisions that really impressed me was Super Street, and let's give you the final in that division. Well, there was great car count in this division, Eric, and Tim Smart and Fred Schwab advanced to the final. Smart will be in the left lane, and uh, Schwab in the right lane. They're working on an 1120 index and a 400 reaction light. And rolling in on the tower side, Fred Schwab in a Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, his 73 Dodge Dart big block Chevy Power with the Power Glide and his bird in. And he will face the 73 Chevy Vegas small block Chevrolet Power, Tim Smart hailing from Balzac, Alberta. Well, Fred Schwab, I'm sure, had a chance to cut his teeth in the same place I did, SIR, Saskatoon International Raceway. And uh, Smart, with a couple of drag strips in Calgary, has some experience as well. well you have some background in this sport, do you? A little bit. Okay. It always helps. Okay, let's get them staged up here. The Super Street Final. A lot of good cars down to the final pair. A 436 reaction in the left lane for Smart, the better of the two. And let's see if he can make it stick at the top end. This is a good one. Fred Schwab. Very close. Yep, Fred Schwab, Ron, takes the win. 11.23 with an 8. There you see it at 120.77 miles an hour. Losing time on 11.27 for Smart in the white bag. So Fred Schwab in a Saskatoon is our champion. The Mopar Canadian National Open in the Super Street Division. Here's a good look at the top end. This was very close by the naked eye. You couldn't see really who won this one. But once we get down to the stripe and apply all the numbers to it, things become pretty clear. Nice drive by Fred Schwab. Yeah, that's very close. Very close indeed. All righty. Super stock and stock final, and the Mopar sponsors, the Mopar fans, couldn't have asked for a better one. 
Clarence Bitniak out of Edmonton, Alberta, and that car there, Bill Williams out of Clive, Alberta, in the 74 Cuda. There you see the ladder, how they advance this far. Bitniak will be dialed in at 11.72 in the left lane. Williams, 11.20 in the right lane. There's that gorgeous 70 Plymouth Roadrunner 446 pack. An easy buy run to get to this particular situation. Williams took care of Joe Graves to reach the final. Well, interesting that Bitniak will change his dial in. He previously was dialed in at 11.79, but he did run 11.73, so he's changed it now to the 11.72, as I mentioned earlier. And Eric Williams uh, has dialed in at 11.20. This despite the fact that he earlier ran at 11.13. So look out here in the right lane. This is going to be a good one. An all Mopar final in the Canadian National Open, sponsored by Mopar Performance Parts. Couple of Plymouth, the roadrunner against the Cuda. Bitniak in the left lane, off the line first with a 6.19 reaction, working on an 11.72 dial in. Look at this. Top end, 11.14 and a breakout. Here in the near lane, the wind will go back to Bitniak with an 11.69. He broke out as well, but broke out by the least for the victory. Yeah, double breakout, and they say the least of the worst will take the win in that situation. And Clarence Bitniak is our champion in stock super stock at the Mopar Canadian National Open. There it is. 11.69 on an 11.72 dial in. Now watch in the near lane. Williams goes through with an 11.14 on an 11.20 dial in. Broke out by more, and so the wind goes back to the far lane. Mopar Muscle Cars rule here at Calgary with our winner, John. Well, Clarence, I can tell you that the fans in the stands have been admiring the car all afternoon. Uh, congratulations, you won the uh, stock super stock combo here at the Mopar uh, Canadian National Open. That's kind of appropriate, isn't it? Thanks a lot. Good day for you today. Oh, well, it was going okay. All right, well. The final was, uh, I wasn't sure who won at the end. It was pretty close. Ron's a pretty good racer, so I guess the numbers fell my way. So. Your day, congratulations. Thanks a lot. I don't think he wants to sell that car, do you? Thanks, man. Great looking car, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know who wants to buy it. Yeah, John Massinger is going to trade the, the truck in. However, I don't think there's enough horsepower even in the Roadrunner to pull our production trailer. What do you think? <laughs> don't think so. But here's the race I've been looking forward to, the Super Comp Final. It'll be Terry Cameron against Mark Campbell. Check out the ladder, how they arrived to the final. This Campbell will be awfully tough, Eric. A couple of great reaction times in route to the final, 401 and 407. That is consistency, and I'll tell you something. If a, a young man at the age of 17 is going to go anywhere in drag racing, you need to be consistent. The reaction times are very important. I don't care if it's at this level or the top fuel level. You need consistent reaction times and ETs to win rounds, to win championships. If he's learning that now, he's got a great future ahead of him. There's Terry Cameron, the man he'll face out of Calmar, Alberta, the former oval track stock car racer. Well, they're working on the 920 index once again, Eric, and mm -hmm. Cameron's best time on the day so far, 920 with a 7. His best mile per hour was 147.71. Little shy in comparison to Campbell's 149.82. Nod of approval there from his dad, Don, the crew chief on the car as he backs it in nice and straight. These guys have got themselves really together, even though he's only 17. Well, his best time so far is a 921 with the four. Not quite as quick as Cameron, but I think you'll see Campbell in the near, near lane. Probably, if he is going to win this, it'll be at the line. Reaction time in the lights oh so important. No matter what division you're running in, you master the tree, you pretty well got it done. Both drivers stage now, and... Off the line first, it's Campbell with a 413 to a 419. This will be close top end. Get a lot of this drag race. Super Cup final, and the winner goes to Campbell. Breakout for Cameron in the far lane, a 917 on that 920 index. Winning time then is a 925 at 148.8 miles an hour for young Mark Campbell. Well, that's the way it happens sometimes. The other guy in the other lane will do something he's not supposed to with Cameron breaking out. Mark Campbell claims the victory and the champion of Super Comp here at the Canadian National Open at Calgary. On the replay, you see Campbell with the 413 reaction in the near lane. Let's go to the top end and check out the interval. Cameron will actually finish ahead, Eric, but three hundredths of a second under the index, and the wind will go back to Campbell in the near lane. So Mark Campbell pretty nervous about getting all the way down to the final, but he pulls it off where he has to. And the victory in Supercom. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, he beat you, actually, but he also broke out. Uh, congratulations, Mark. Great yeah. afternoon. Oh, wonderful. Since the, the terrible day we had yesterday, this just makes it so great. 
Oh, yes. Big sigh of relief. There you go. Uh, Mark, uh, when you run a class like this, what's the first thing that goes through your mind when you've got this many quality cars? What are you thinking about just, round by round? You just got to concentrate like crazy on the lights and, and make the team, get a good team together so you can run the number every round and just, you got to work real hard at it. Well, you ran the number all day and got a gift in the final. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. There are a lot of talented Canadians, both at the wheel and on the cruise of a lot of impressive drag racing teams from Canada. And you may be looking at Canada's newest drag racing star for the future in Mark Campbell. 401, 407, and 413 reaction times en route to the victory here in Supercomp. Terry Cameron there, good friends uh, with Mark Campbell discussing the run. Top alcohol dragster final. This is uh, the pair of the big dogs we've been waiting for all day long. Brian David Chuck out of Edmonton, Alberta, and Steve Sitko out of Edmonton, Alberta. There's a lot of family crossover that I'll describe to you in a second here. David Chuck will be in the left-hand lane, and again, working on the 4-0-0 reaction light. His previous best was a 4, or make that a 6-41 at 210.18 miles an hour. Sitko in the right lane ran a 6-63, had a great reaction time and just over 200 miles an hour for his career best, but he's in tough here today. The Sitco Dragster, Steve Sitco at the controls. Out of Edmonton, the 92 Arctic Sitco chassis, Keith Black Power Plant comes to life. The brother of Ken Sitco, who happens to be the crew chief and the co-owner of the Dragster driven by Brian David Chuck in the opposite lane. So you've got all kinds of crossover here. The Sitco family is so involved, this was bound to happen sooner or later. National record, as we mentioned early, 579 with a 5 at 244.3 miles an hour. I don't believe that's in jeopardy. We haven't had a five-second pass on the show yet today. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how David Chuck does in the left lane. You recall he had some piston problems earlier in the meet and an oil leak he alluded to with John. Steve's crew chief is his dad, George, and Steve Sitko lights him up for his burnout. Brian David Chuck out of Edmonton in the Arctic chassis with Keith Black in the power plant department does his burnout as well. The Arctic Traveler, this car, by the way, the 85 American Drag Racing Association world champion and NHRA Division 6 runner-up in 89. A lot of impressive wins on the history life of that chassis. Good crowd looking on here in Calgary. You're looking at about uh, 2,000 horsepower apiece, so when they light them up, this ground is going to shake. Yeah, 4,000 horsepower combined uh, tends to do that. However, coming up at the uh, tail end of our show here this afternoon, I'm going to show you a top fuel exhibition run. Mike Rainey out of Colorado, and you're talking 5,000. Now they're getting computer readings, but the top fuel cars may be peaking out at about 62 to 6,300 horsepower. But right now, we've got some business to attend to, and that's the top alcohol dragster final. Brian David Chuck out of Edmonton and fellow Edmontonian Steve Sitko. Both drivers having their crew chiefs back them up. It looks like they're right on line with their burnout, Eric, and so they should have great traction. Again, that 4.00 light. Best reaction time of the day for, so far for Sitco is a 4.64 as they scrub off the rear tires in his machine. David Chuck with a 5.88. Credit to Ben Doctor and the entire drag racing crew here, Bruce Weiss and everyone keeping this track in such immaculate shape. The track has not gone away at all today. And as you say, either lane is good. There's no advantage one from the other. Testament of a good drag racing crew. You've got it here at Race City. Well, the temperature has cooled off just a wee bit from the start of our program, but it shouldn't make too much difference in terms of performance and horsepower. Both drivers in the staging area. Let's listen in as they heat them up. He made that look rather simple, didn't he? I didn't expect that kind of a final. The crew elated, and more smoke coming out both sides of the engine. I really think he heard something there. Doesn't matter. Brian David Chuck out of Edmonton is our champion and top alcohol dragster at Calgary. Here's the difference off the line. The far lane will get the advantage, pulling the wheels ever so slightly. And we go to the top end, and we'll check it out as they zip through at 211 miles an hour. Here's John. As Brian's crew comes down to join him, Brian, congratulations. Uh, 640, um, 211 miles an hour. Well, that's pretty good. That was our best pass of the weekend, and considering how hot it was today, I'm real happy for myself and the crew chief, Ken Sitko, and he just did a great job putting this car together, and I'm real happy for him to get the car down the track like that. Now, it looks like he's burped a little bit of oil out in the blower drive. Nothing serious. 
I don't think so. It might have caught with one piston or a couple pistons, but I think we'll be all right. We'll just buy some new stuff and put her in. So congratulations to Brian David Chuck, who wins the top alcohol dragster final here today. Losing time, by the way, for Sitco was a 665 at 199.82 miles an hour. But a good run for David Chuck and company. And a great final in top alcohol dragster. Now we talked about 2,000 horsepower. Let us double it and give you a couple of uh, pieces of change on the side. 5,000 up to 6,000 plus horsepower in a top fuel exhibition run. The Colorado Raider is the name of the car. The driver is Mike Rainey out of Fruta, Colorado. The crew chief is Bill Rainey, Mike's dad, 280 inches long. Most top fuel dragsters now about 300 inches long. So this one's kind of short by standards. 500 cubic inch Keith Black engine, BAE head and an Odyssey blower. 12-stage pneumatic clutch, although now some of the guys are experimenting with a fingerless pneumatic clutch. Nitro-methane is the fuel, and they'll burn about 12 gallons of it in the average run. He won't burn that much. it will be backed off a little bit, but uh, you do not get any more powerful or any louder or any more emotional at the starting line of a drag race than you do with anything powered by nitro-methane. And I'll tell you one thing, if that burnout was any indication we're in for a whale of a show, do these seats have uh, seat belt? I think they better be full it down here because if you've never heard a fuel car live, it is the loudest mechanized noise you will ever hear by far. It'll be a scary run for Mike, no doubt about that. He'll be pulling both positive and negative G-forces. Positive when they come off the line, negative when these two shoots pop up at the top end. Three to four G's when they're running in competition. It won't be that severe. If you need a goalpost to shoot at here, Ron, remember Shirley Muldowney's win over Don the Snake Prudhomme on race line last year. Her ET was a 5-1-4 with a 6 at 284.81 miles an hour. Whether or not uh, Mike Rainey gets close to that, I don't know, but that at least gives you something to shoot for at this track. Oh, I think he'll be in the fives. He should be. There's that patented black with a top fuel nitromethane burning dragster. Well, Mike set the stage. Let's listen in the whole run. Pretty straight run. He got squirrely about the halfway point. There is the reaction time, the ET of 5.42 and 252.59 miles per hour. Not as stout as Shirley Muldowney's, but definitely in the ballpark. Got to get more of these nitro burners on these shows for sure. That thing got up and moved, particularly in the uh, first quarter of this drag strip. So thanks to uh, Mike Rainey, who brought the Colorado Raider here to Calgary. Big fan favorite and a great day of drag racing here at the Mopar Performance Parts Canadian National Open. Castrol GTX Performer of the Race. Not too much said about this one. Mark Campbell near flawless on the starting line all weekend long. and Enjoyed himself as we did here in Calgary all weekend long. You know, we'd like to stay longer, but I think uh, just enough of that Western hospitality they've become famous for here at uh, Race City Speedway Motorsports Park. That's going to wrap it up from here. On behalf of Ron St. Clair and John Massingbird, I'm Eric Thomas, and we'll talk to you next time on Raceline. In car and wall camera supplied by Sony Canada, makers of the Sony Handycam. Raceline's radio supplied by the rental division of Motorola Canada Limited. Race Line has been brought to you by Kodak Gold Ultra 400 Film for all your Kodak moments. By Aerofoil Wiper Blades, the leading edge in wiper technology. By Mopar Performance Parts, your first choice. By Castrol GTX Motor Oil, engineered for today's harder working engines. And by your parts pro retailer. Call 1-800-567-4994 for the Parts Pro dealer nearest you. today. We're live at the 8th